Are you gonna play that one before? No, 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 not my far. No. Who is that? Radiohead. The song's called Video Tape. You're thinking you've heard that before? Because my youngest brother was playing that on the piano the last time that we did videos. That's it. And it's called Videotape. It's the last song on an album called In Rainbows by the incomparable great Radiohead, the band. Cool. Really good song. There's some interesting facts behind that song too, and the syncopation and how it was how it was done. It's really cool. Hey everybody, welcome back to Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson. He's Judson. Uh, great measures. Great measures. Getting into some Metallica today. This is from 1986's Master of Puppets. Did Metallica make any music outside of the 80s? They did. H have they? Yeah. Did they keep on going? Yeah. Those guys, they catch a... We might listen to some stuff. They catch some other album breaks and some, get some videos we out there. Do, we might do something from the self-titled Black Album next time. I'll do it right now. <laughs> We're just staying in the 80s, Okay, bro. we'll get out of the 80s next time. I'm sorry. No, nah, it's okay. There's just that's so the, much that's the only, so much good stuff from the 80s. That's the only good stuff they got. All right, this is from Master Puppets. This, Master. Song, this is the opening track to the album. This is called Battery. Like Assault and Battery? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's also, I think it's also a reference to, from what I've seen, may be wrong, it's a reference to Battery Street in San Francisco, which is where a lot of the clubs and venues that they played when they first started as a band was. They have a battery in But yeah, South physical Coast. battery is probably it. It's in there too. Yeah, <laughs> I would think. Okay. Um. So think... One of the greatest thrash metal albums of all time. It's 1986. You just bought the cassette or the CD. If you had money, you probably had CDs back then. I don't think CDs came out until like, what, 82? I don't remember. I think it was 82. Really? Yeah. Huh. 81 or 82, yeah. Uh, the first album ever on a CD was a Billy Joel album. Might have been the stranger. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of that. We're finding out very interesting. Here's mm -hmm. another piece. Did you know there's no B batteries? Yeah. Isn't that weird? That is weird. Is there anything else we just bring up? This? I don't, I'm gonna remember this though about <sighs> Billy Joel. Yeah, I was. It might have been the stranger. I don't know. I, I may have the album wrong, but it was a, a a Billy Joel album was the first album ever put on CD. Wow. Uh, yep. Yeah, so this is. So you were going. You just so I'm picked up. You okay. just picked up this album, and this is the opening track. It kind of sets the tone for the whole thing. I'm just. I don't know. And I have no idea. I'm just buying this because yeah. the cover looks cool. Well, you've never heard any of this stuff either, except for a couple of the songs. Oh, I'm just saying. I when I, I used to walk around the CD store when I was a kid, and I just go pick through something based pick on something. the artwork. Yeah. So I'm imagining that I'm doing that right now. All right. Let's do it. All right. Ready? Yeah! <laughs> Sir, can I return this CD and get the Billy Joel CD instead? <laughs> <laughs> no, kid. Sorry, you start it over. All right. Thank you. 
forgive me okay for not um remembering this okay cliff's on this album he is he's on he's on the first this was four. the last one he did he's on the first four for sure first three. First three. First three full length albums. And the one the one that he's not on that's first after that was Injustice. Injustice? Okay. He did Kill 'em All, Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets. Okay. Sorry, I just You're good. He is in this though. Okay. Ready? Yeah, dog. I think that's something I don't like about thrash metal. And we can go back. I want the guitar solo to start again. Yeah, sorry, I got it. sorry, sorry. No, I rewound uh, it. Um, is the. I don't know. Battle Yeah, it's sort of. It's yeah. sort of. You had a uh, problem with that. Well, you had a problem with that in Master of Puppets. Yeah. The amount of it in Master of yeah, Puppets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I mean, but it's so good for crowd participation. Yeah. Live? Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. This is an interesting, and we can talk about this later. But, but, okay. Sorry, sorry. You good. What's fixing to happen? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a reason to stop it right here. I was just, I was tickled. Well, you had a weird look about the the short little guitar solo. No, it just, it, I just, it was a short, it was a short little guitar solo. That's true. You know, I was expecting we were fixing to. Not yet. Tear it down. Not yet. All right, I shouldn't have stopped it right here. My okay. bad. <laughs> My bad.
What you got? Well, so first of all, I'll say that, I'm trying to remember. Um, first of all, the song sounds like somebody's punching you. Like you're getting battered. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. I mean, the, the point of a good song is ambiguity, I think. You know, having multiple, being able to sing about a few different things with one, with one thing. All right, so if this, you said this is, Possibly about a place where there were bars in San Francisco where metal was going Could possibly on. Possibly be a reference to Battery Street, yes. All right, I'm, I'm, I would assume that if there's a metal scene going on down there, you're talking about Battery is Found in Me and it's an obsession. Right. I think the, the Battery is Found in Me also is a callback to that's where their roots are. Okay, so, so there you go. That, so they're singing about, you said non believers, something about non believers. Uh, Crushing all deceivers, mashing non-believers. Yeah, so that's what this music does to people, right? When 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 they came out doing this, this was a this was a new thing in the way that they were doing it. Sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. So and people didn't like. I mean, conservative people or oh yeah, conventional conventional, conventional humans people, yeah. are are they don't you know they don't even I get it sometimes when I'm listening to it like towards the end of the song when it sounds like it's over and then they pick it up again mm -hmm. and then it's like is it ever gonna be over like just for a second you know i hear my I'm, I'm i hear my parents or something in my head going yeah you know so i i get that and i think maybe that's part of all right so a good song is able to sing about that and then also be talking about actual battery physical battery making the music sound like you're getting battered. And even the word, you know, I mean, I can see where, I can see where, and, and, and even the word itself, battery, is, an, is, is you use to power and energize something. That's what this music has, is energy, right? It gets, you, it gets you full of this, of, of emotion that, that, you know, sometimes is expressed in some type of, more of a, of, a, of a violent or or physical maybe expression but either way it's something that has people running around you know yeah it's not a it's not like celine dion we were just chilling mm -hmm. um or riding on the front of a boat with our arms out or anything right king of the world yeah king of the world type stuff um <laughs> but um so i think that's what a good song is right to be able to have all those elements together, then you have art. Then you have something that speaks in many different ways. It's personal to them. I can hear the history and I go, oh, that's cool. And I, it's a history lesson for me. Or the music represents whatever the lyrics are in that kind of way, being that it's, it's, it feels like it's battering you. And then also it is energizing, like a battery is. So you have all these, these different things that's what a good that's what I got that's my opinion of what a good song is sure um and I hear that all I hear that in that mm -hmm. um I don't I don't necessarily understand the very beginning acoustic part it's beautiful uh, oh it is beautiful it's it beautiful. is beautiful yeah but where does it fit into yeah yeah Seems like it's just like hey you guys are playing acoustic guitar in yeah. front of this you know almost almost sort of lulling you yeah. And then hitting you, yeah. you know, like, ha! It gives you a sense of security, and then it's like... Yeah, never no, mind. I'm about to batter you over the head. Yeah, but it's still Metallica sound, you know, like that... Whatever that melody was, I can't remember it right now. there but but you know whatever it's part of the song 
Um, so I guess so. There's this thing about Lars, right? I mean, it, the people are just kind of like, ah, Lars, sort of. Sure. Yeah. Some people. There is a there is an opinion out there that he is not a great drummer, that he's a little overrated. I think I agree with that opinion after in that song. If I were just to, because some of how he is like rather than you know like from what I know about drumming, my brother's a drummer, so I pay attention to whatever he talks about and what he's doing. And when you're heavy-handed in one, if, if you're not, you know, it's supposed to be, rather than, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. one heavier than the sure. other. I'm, I'm sure you could tell yeah. how finite I was. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I didn't like the drumming in this so much. Okay. Especially the drum break. Okay. I think there was a good place for the drum break. Yeah. I just don't, I just, I, that's what I thought immediately. I was like, is this what they, is this why this whole Lars thing that I don't understand all the way? I see comments on about, on it, just kind of, nobody ever says exactly what it is. It's just, okay, Lars, sort of a thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he is a beautiful <laughs> individual, inside and out, really. I don't. But it just kind of clicked with. I'm not trying to be a dick here. I'm just. No, saying. I know. I, I'm not. I'm not of the opinion that he's overrated or he's not a good drummer. Because obviously, like, I have no knowledge of how to play the drums. I don't have any drumming expertise. I, Metallica is near and dear to me, so I'm biased. Obviously, like. I mean, He's the guy. Metallica obviously did some things with some of their stuff that they might not have should have done, you know? Um, we could all do better in our lives. But I think I, I, I appreciate the fact that they were willing to take the risk that they took because there are people who will stay in their box and never get out of their box. But on the subject of Lars... I'm biased because this band, especially this era, is just, it's got a place in my heart that will never go away. And I mean, he's Metallica's drummer. He's been Metallica's exactly. drummer since exactly. the beginning. I mean, he started the band. Did like, he? Yeah. Oh, well, then. Like, it's his, it's him and James. You know, they always say that you, 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 you always play with somebody better than you so you can rise to the competition. Sure. So yeah. maybe that's what he was doing. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying he's a bad drummer. I'm just saying at that point, I kind of heard, it, it, I just kind of like was this about the drum, you know, just for a second. I was like, wow, it's a cool place for a drum break, but didn't, didn't, didn't really. Back to the song. I'm talking about the song. Man. I, I don't know, but we're, we're still on Lars. <laughs> yeah, let's get off of Lars. Like uh, I got off your mom. The right. The right hand <laughs> guitar work I'm in sorry. this song is oh yeah, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. The the gallopy type stuff, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's not easy to keep up doing that for. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe and singing. Yeah, maybe for a song. Well, I mean, you know, it's all rhythmic. So, but but still that. Come on, it's not. It's tough. I mean, it helps if you drink a lot sometimes because you get loose. <laughs> Maybe a little cocaine in there, too. I mean, one and on top of the other yeah, is the best. you'd be good to go. It's really the best you'd way. You'd be good to go. Um, and then I also had this thought of, I mean, Kirk can, can play, dude. Mm -hmm. It's just from, from then until now, dude, it's just, he's a monster. But there is, and I, I'm not in the same category, but there is a faction of opinions out there that Kirk is overrated and not a good guitar player. The, well, the fact, the, all right, that's ridiculous. The fact I that he's, well, no, no, wait, wait. I'm me, just saying I, I'm those trying to, opinions I'm trying to play both do sides. exist. I'm trying to play both sides because mm -hmm. it's obvious that he's a good guitar player. Sure. Okay. And I, I might have been exaggerating by say, them saying he's not a good guitar player, but overrated would probably be. Yeah. I, but the overrated part, man, 
I've never heard him just mutilate or just make a guitar beg for him to stop, you know, playing. There, I mean, there's guitar players that, that you know, like Prince would always do something. I saw this guy playing. Uh, this gonna, it's gonna kill me. I can't remember his name right now. Scott Metzger. Okay. Scott Metzger. I just saw him. I just saw him. We play in a band. J Rad is what they call it. Joe Russo is almost dead. It's a, it's a Grateful Dead thing. And they're they're unreal musicians. Joe Russo is one of the greatest drummers on planet Earth. But anyway, I had never seen Metzger play before, and and he played with a band called Lamp, which is Russ Lawton, Ray. I can't. I can't. I know Ray's last name, but I can't say it. It's a long, like Russian or Polish name. You know, Okay plays keys and does bass on his, or plays organ and has some cool stuff. And, and anyway, and, th and this guy played, to Metzger's playing, and, and my brother and I went to go see them in Raleigh last week or week four, whenever it was. And he does things on a guitar where you're surprised that a guitar has that available to you to do to it. Okay. You know what I mean? Sure. I haven't ever heard Kurt do that kind of thing mm -hmm. to where he's just, you know, I mean, whenever I play with a, with a whammy bar, I'm, I'm trying to get the most sounds out of that thing that, that I didn't know could come out of mm -hmm. it, you know, and be as abstract with it as I can. I guess that's the thing. He's not a, he's not an abstract guitar player. Okay. I can see right? that. Yeah. I did want to give out a shout out to Metzger. I was really, that show was really good. But anyway, um, but I, I, when I was when I was listening to that solo right then, I realized that um, if I think if we were if we were to listen to Pearl Jam's Even Flow right now, mm -hmm. and listen to Mike McCready, who I love dearly, and who I know is probably a wonderful person, um, when he comes out and plays his solo on Even Flow, or or any of the uh, solos that he comes out and he has his wah pedal because that, you know Kurt plays that wah pedal comes out with it first, like Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Totally influenced by Jimmy. 100%. Who doesn't want to be Jimmy? He Hicks? will tell you that. And I have no, and I have no problem. I have, I have no problem with anybody who, I mean, Stevie Ray Vaughan made a life out of trying to be Jimmy Hendrix. Sure. He did his own, he has his own sound, but so does he. <laughs> and how can you not be influenced by the greatest guitar player of all time? So, or one of the greatest guitar manipulators. Anyway, I realized that Mike McCready, and I can listen for this now, when he comes out and plays his wah pedal, when he's using his wah pedal and he comes out, he's mimicking that dude. Okay. Kirk Just, Hammett. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's mimicking Kirk. I think, yes. Okay. I think the, gr the grunge bands in the 90s obviously are going to be birthed from some kind of sure. Metallica sound, mm -hmm. right? I just, I just, when he came out, came out in that solo and bad to a Ray, um, I, I'll, it, it, it hit me. It was like, dude, they're all ripping off that dude. Okay. With the wah pedal. I mean, okay, you have a wah pedal, you have a fender, whatever. It's, there's a sound there. So I, I'm not trying to say that they just have the same sound because of wah pedal and a fender and Jimi Hendrix, all, you know, it's how you play it. And, Kurt comes out. Kurt doesn't screw around right. from the first note. He yeah. comes out like, "Here I am. I'm I, <laughs> here. I go <laughs> like, boom. You know what yeah. I mean? Just from and, and sometimes that would bother me, but he does it, and it's like we're in it all yeah. the way. And he totally does. I, I I I don't think he's an overrated guitar player, but I can see where if somebody is saying. He's he's not abstract or he's not all these other technical things. If that's what you're calling a good guitar player, then yeah, he's horrible. You know what I mean? He's not abstract. If if that's what your definition sure, of a yeah. guitar player is, then yeah, sure. Okay. Kirk Hammond sucks. <laughs> but but you cannot say he's not a bad dude. I mean he's he's unreal. I th yeah. I don't know. I I just ha it just kinda opened up in my mind when that solo happened. I, I all of a sudden heard Mike McCready. I heard some Alice in Chains uh, stuff. Uh, something else came to my mind too. Oh, Soundgarden. Yeah. 
I mean, he comes out with his wah pedal. Dude, you're hearing influence from that dude. Okay. Like you're pointing over there like he's over there. So, hey, Kurt. Come over here and say hello. No. Next time. Um, sorry, I just had a couple things that I stuck out of my head that I wanted to make sure no, I got you're out. Good. You're good. I don't want to say them in the middle of the song because I already stopped the song for no reason. It's all good. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, I have nothing. I mean, you you had a I lot. I just ran my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. Yeah, I, I, I mean, one of my favorite albums. Mm -hmm. It's a great song. Uh, that intro, I don't know. I, I remember, have I talked about, I may have already. What? Have I talked about how I ended up hearing for the first time these first four albums with my braces, the trips to the orthodontist? With your mom? Yeah. That is not a joke. <laughs> yeah. Have I talked about this? I think I talked I think about this you've in the told, last one. I, no, I think you've told me about it, but I don't think you've told them about it. Did I not talk about this in the last Metallica video? I'm pretty sure you didn't. I think I would remember. I think I would have your mom jokes all over the place. Don't you? I think you've told me. We'll save it for another time. Oh, I don't know. I'll about go back that. and watch. I gotta go back and watch the uh, anesthesia video. Make sure. I, I talk about don't it. know about yeah, that. Yeah, we'll save it for another time. All right, executive. Stay decision. tuned for the next Metallica <laughs> video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We are Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson. That was Battery Great Measures by Metallica from 1986's Master of Puppets. Master. Have a wonderful day, everybody.